Hey there, welcome back. I'm Professor Inc. And in this very short video, I wanted to take a couple minutes and just show you how you can pause a program in a C++ standards compliant kind of way. Uh, this method will work no matter which platform you're developing for, um, whether you're writing code on a Windows machine or in a Mac OS environment or some kind of a Linux environment, this is going to work uh, just fine. Okay, so in preparation for this video, I put together a empty project using Visual Studio and I've gone ahead and written kind of the standard Hello World program. And right now, if I go ahead and compile this thing, compile it and run it, what am I going to have, right? You'd expect to see a screen that says hello world, but as you just saw, my window opened and closed immediately, so I never had the opportunity to see anything, right? So here I am continuously compiling and running this thing. Now, what's going on? Why is that happening? Well, the thing is, is that um, Windows is or, or Visual Studio compiles this thing and tells Windows go ahead and run this program and then Windows says fine I'll run it I'll open up a window for you execute it and well your program is done now so I'll close the window right there's no point in keeping it open so if we want to actually see you know what was displayed if we actually want to see the low world we're going to need to um, just we're going to need to pause our program in some way right so let me show you the way that a lot of newer programmers do this right and this is really the incorrect way of doing it because it only works on windows right this method is not c plus plus this method is going to use a windows specific system call right so you know new programmers they'll do their research they'll hop on stack overflow or something well people on stack overflow would know better than to tell you to do this but maybe they google or something and they come across this instruction that says hey use a system pause right you can use that and that'll keep your window open right this is the wrong way to do it right so I compile and run and wow check it out hello world I can actually see um, what's on the screen now and system pause is telling Windows hey keep this open display at the end press any key to continue and and as soon as somebody hits enter then I'm done then the program's over right Problem with this is that system pause is for Windows only. It's not C++. It's not part of the language in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so this will only work on a Windows computer. This is terrible. This is crap. This is horrible. Never do it. Okay, so instead, the correct thing to do is to use a function that's actually part of the C++ library. Right, so there is a function as you know right an object called um, cn and with cn if we say dot get there's a function that is part of that cn object that we can use let me not forget to do my std here um, that will allow us what cn what cn dot get what this get function does this method that's part of the cn object what it does is it basically reads the next character that you type right so Let's try this again. Right, let's compile and run this thing. Okay, wow, check it out. My window's still open. Notice there's not any hit enter to continue because there's no code. I'm not using system pause. There's no code in here saying, you know, display that to the screen. So cn.get here is waiting for the user to hit enter, right? So this function, which is part of the cn object, it's part of the C++ standard library. This will work anywhere. This is the correct way to do it. Right, system pause is garbage. Do not use it. Okay. Now that being said, let me show you a wrinkle. Right, a problem that you can encounter with this. Right. So let's say that you asked the user for some kind of input. Right. So let's say that we did something like this. Um, we prompt the user, enter a number. Okay. And then. Um, We've got an integer variable, and we're going to use cn to read into that variable, whatever they typed. And then we want to display, you know, just for this example, it's a silly example. You entered, you know, 
X, you know, you entered whatever is inside of X. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to do that. Now, this is going to break our CNN.get solution here, and I'll explain why here in just a second. So let's go ahead and compile and run this. All right, so we got the hello world. Okay, nothing new there. We got our prompt for entering a number. Okay, now CN is waiting for us to type in some number, right? Say 66. So as soon as we hit enter, then we should see you entered 66, right? And then we should have a pause so we can actually see that. But ta-da, it didn't work. What happened? Okay. So what happens is, is that, let me just put in comments here, give you a little note, I guess you could say. What happened was, is when we type 66, enter, this is what went into the temporary memory location known as the keyboard buffer. This is what was stored. 66, and then the new line character, the enter, which is represented by backslash n. It's a single character, but this is a character representation of it. So what's in this temporary memory location, this folding area, is 66, and then the new line character, okay? So cn reads the 66 and extracts that. Okay, but CN ignores white space, and the new line character is considered white space. You know, hitting the space bar, a uh, space character, that's white space. Tab, that's white space. But anyway, so CN reads up and extracts the six and the six, converts it into an integer, and stores it into X. But the problem is, is that it leaves this new line character in the buffer. It's left over. So then when we get to line 18 here, and we, and we, ex we execute CN.get, CN.get, reads the new line character from the keyboard buffer okay removing it from the keyboard buffer and says oh cool somebody must have hit enter and then executes and the program terminates okay so not the best it's broken so what we have to do is we have to after we read the 66 we have to add an additional instruction that deals with that new line character right that gets it out of the keyboard buffer so that way cn.get can do its job as it did previously before we introduced cnx, right? So that's where the ignore uh, function can come in, okay? So cn.ignore, ignore is a method, it's a function that belongs to the cn object, and by default, without any arguments, what it does is it ignores the very next character in the keyboard buffer, right? So what it does is essentially is it rips out that new line character and then uh, when cn.get goes to execute there's nothing in the keyboard buffer so then it starts waiting for the user to you know hit enter again so what's going to happen is is the user is going to type you know 66 and then hit enter okay and then cn is going to take that 66 and remove it convert it it's going to remove it from the keyboard buffer convert it to an integer and then store it to next, right? And then we're gonna come along and cn.ignore is going to execute. cn.ignore is gonna remove that new line character, okay, emptying the keyboard buffer, and then line 18 is gonna come along and execute, and the keyboard buffer is gonna be empty, so it's gonna wait for the user to put a new line character into the keyboard buffer, right, by hitting enter. So let's go ahead and compile and run this and see how this fixes our problem, see an example of our problem being fixed. All right, so there's hello world. There's our prompt for entering the number. Let's type 66, enter. So three characters go into the keyboard buffer, right? Now though, it works. CN extracted the six in the six, converted that into an integer, put that in X, and then CN.ignore extracted, took the new line character out of the keyboard buffer. And now line 18 cn.get is waiting for the user to hit enter and thereby put the new line character in the keyboard buffer so that way you can get it out and our program can finish so now if i hit enter program's done okay so hopefully you found that useful that's everything that i wanted to show you i just want to keep this short and quick and just wanted to show you the proper way to pause a c plus plus program the way that is standards compliant that doesn't rely on this crappy system pause windows only uh, system call. So the cn.get method will work on any platform, any computer, anywhere because the cn object is part of the Windows standard library. It's not a, excuse me, it's part of the C++ standard library. It's not part of the Windows API. So it will work 
anywhere and that code will compile on any machine okay so and in addition to that I showed you what can happen if you try to mix CN and um, CN.get right that that new line character is left over in the character buffer and that's because um, the CN object is going to be ignoring the white space well to be more precise it's it's the stream extraction operator that's ignoring it but you know for all intents and purposes you can think of it as CN ignoring it too but anyway so hope you found that video helpful hope that cleared some things up for you in case you were wondering uh, as usual if you're a student of mine and you have any questions please feel free to send me an email or to stop by my office hours Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.